So hi everyone, this is Jurassic Gate from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a 100% walkthrough for the game we were here together. Now I apologise, it's been a little bit quiet on the content front recently from us, however we're now getting back into the swing of things, but thank you guys for your continued support during that quiet period, it is much appreciated. So in this video, it's a full spoiler warning effect from this point onwards, I will show you how to get every achievement. It's going to take you uh, one and a half-ish playthroughs, so you'll need to play through uh, the second half of the game from chapter five onwards as the alternate player, uh, and then you'll need to play the last chapter three times over to get the remaining achievements. Now, in this game, it is a co-op puzzle. The idea is that you have to work together with your co-op partner to make sure that you both get towards the end goal. Um, there are 10 chapters in total. Okay, so let's get the show on the road, and the first achievement comes from starting the game. So you click on the start one, and you want to click create room down in the bottom. Uh, and you want to create this room, and you'll be loaded through into the screen just here. Uh, and once you're through onto the screen, you need to invite the co-op partner into the game, and you'll bag yourself the achievement for inviting that co-op partner into the game. Yeah, very easy achievement to get yourself started, but nonetheless, it's all good. Okay, so once you're in the game, you're going to pretty much kick off by being in bed. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to jump down and you're going to look at a walkie-talkie. Uh, pressing the left bumper will allow you to use this walkie-talkie. However, you can actually be in an Xbox or PS PlayStation party or whatever they call it that side. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to exit your room and your co-op partner will need to do the same thing. Uh, it's going to encourage you to use the different emotes, so pushing down will wave and uh, up will point. We didn't really need to use them during this, however. Uh, the first activity that you need to do is collect these valves. So these valves are dotted around the room, there's five of them. There's one on the side of the kitchen. To the right of the kitchen you'll find one by this machine just here. Turn around and exit and make your way over to the fireplace and you are going to find a third one just on the side of this here. You then need to use the square valve on this door. Use left and right to select the different types of valves and the shapes. Once that's open you want to make your way into the garage. Uh, and you want to go out the back door just here. Once you have opened that door, you want to take a left, you want to go around to the other side, and you want to use the triangle valve on the door to open the garage door. Once you've done that, start making your way further around the house. You're going to come up to this big snow pile here. Uh, clicking on the left stick to run and press Y to jump, by the way. Uh, make your way to the top of the roof, and you want to use the cross valve on this one here. Behind that machine, drop down onto the roof and you're going to find the rectangle valve. Take a left and you want to drop down to the bottom just by the frozen lake uh, and you're going to find a frozen valve just here. Once you've done that, you want to make your way back around to the garage. As you're coming around to the garage and there's a car in front of you, go around it, make your way to the right and go through the door and through the door to the right of that. And straight ahead of you is another door that you can use the rectangle valve on. And then you will take your frozen valve into the kitchen and you want to place it on top of the stove. That's going to melt the ice off of this, it takes a few seconds. Okay, once this is melted, you want to grab the wheel off of the, the stove and you want to make your way back around the other side. Go out right past the fireplace and exit out through the garage. Make your way to the far right corner and you'll be able to use this valve on the wooden door. Once you've done that, you want to turn around and you want to climb back on top of the roof. So turn around, make your way down the right hand side and go up the snow pile to the top. So this is our first major puzzle of the game. Um, you're going to come up onto a machine that is linked to radio waves. Uh, on the screen you see the radio machine from player 2's location, so I'm about to show you where that is. Okay, so we're player 2 now and we want to make our way out of the room. We want to take a left and by the kitchen we are just going to find this machine in the side room here. And in front of you you're going to see four buttons. The four buttons, so up will increase the height of the radio wave, down will decrease that wave, 
uh, left and right will increase or decrease the number of waves. Player 1 needs to pass the instruction to player 2 to get it to synchronize with the waves that are appearing on the roof. Now for player 1, they're going to need to give instructions to player 2 on how to increase uh, and how many waves should be going through. Player 1 has a similar set of buttons, just left and right this time. You want to hit the right button and that's going to cause a uh, radio frequency to appear over the top of player 2's radio frequency. And then you need to feed back the instructions to uh, player 2 saying make the wave bigger, make the wave less frequent or more frequent. Once you've got it correct, the first three attempts will give you music and then the fourth attempt is going to give you a emergency broadcast signal which is the clue to answer the second puzzle. So player one does this four times so they rotate the dish four times and player two matches the frequency four times uh, and eventually this will complete that puzzle. So in this example I'm telling Brennan to make the wave higher and more of them and when it's correct Okay, and as you can see here, Brennan is adjusting the buttons to match the frequency that I'm trying to describe to him. And when you've been successful, the wavelength appears on the screen and you get some funky music. Okay, so once this is correct, you wanna hit the right arrow. It doesn't matter which direction you go. You just need to hit it twice and that's gonna bring in the next wave. Uh, in my case, I got a small red wave. So my feedback to player two is to decrease the height of the wave and also increase the number of waves going across the screen. So as you can see that now he's reducing the size uh, and then he's going to keep clicking in to bring in more waves. Again, once this one is right, you will see and hear music. You don't see music, but you'll hear music. And we're now back with player two as they are making their adjustments to the wave. So Brennan's hitting the switches up here to make sure the frequency is right. And once again, once he gets it right, the wave will appear on the screen and funky music will play again. And once, and once you are done the second time, hit the right button again uh, two times and that's going to move the satellite dishes into the next place and then describe to player to the third wave that they need to match up. Okay, so now we're back with player two and Brennan is adjusting the button, so he's increasing the height. Uh, once he's done with this one, he's going to get some funky accordion come through. Okay, and now we are on to wave number three. So hit the button twice more to get the last setup in. Uh, and then player two is gonna receive the instructions from player one to make the final wave. And once you're successful, you're gonna hear a bunch of coordinates to be recited back by the guy sending out the distress signal. You want to write this information down to help you out with the next puzzle. I'll also do what I can to display it on the screen for you. So once you've written it down, player two needs to exit out of the room that they're in and go straight across the cabin and stand by the left switch here next to the second puzzle. So player one now needs to meet up with player two. So to get down, just look to your left and you want to jump off the roof. You can jump off from wherever. It doesn't matter. You're not going to hurt yourself as you fall. Take a right and you're going to go into the garage. Take another quick right and go through the door. There's a second one also on your right and make your way across to the far side. Uh, as you enter this room, you're going to see a very large map and this has coordinates on it. And those coordinates are referring to what you heard over the distress signal. Now the aim of this puzzle is to triangulate the position of the distress signal uh, with the landmarks that are pinned on the map. Uh, you've got a receptacle in the corner that you need to line up with that particular location. The left lever um, that player on the left, whoever it is, will be using, will move it from to the right uh, and the person using the right lever will move it up. You need to move the receptacle to B754 along the bottom and then crank it all the way to the top. You then need to go to E169 
So I have the person on the left hold onto the uh, switch until it reaches the right location. Crank that also up, so it's the tower just at the bottom here. And then the next one is C447. I'd recommend for this part, as opposed to relying on player one to assume that it's in the right location, player two is to inform them when it's correct because it's a matter of perspective. Once it's in the right location, you want to hold down on the right lever until you reach the seal from a rose and that's going to triangulate the position of the distress signal. Okay, so now it's player two, or player one, it doesn't really matter. Um, one of you will need to go outside, so exit out of the building and take a left and go through the garage. And we need to put in six litres of fuel into our car. So head outside and you want to make your way up the hill through the wooden gate you opened earlier. You're going to see two fuel vats in front of you. You want to hit, on each fuel vat, you want to hit the number seven. So we're going to put 14 litres of fuel in. So hit the switch on the front and on the right hand side. Okay, and for player one, what they'll need to do is they'll need to exit. Um, it really doesn't matter which player actually does this anyway. But make your way over to the car. And to the right of the car you're going to see this fuel tank. You want to hit the switch on the left, which is minus eight, and that's going to balance the fuel out and it's going to give you six litres, I think, of fuel. Uh, and then you'll be presented with the option to get in. You can click on the get in, but you'll need player two to join you. So have player two come back to the car. Uh, and once they join you, you will leave uh, and you'll get yourself the achievement for completing chapter one. Okay, so now on to chapter two. Okay, so now we are in chapter two, and you want to start making your way down the path that is directly in front of you, and you'll come across this kind of very large area with lots of lifts in. Um, we're going to get separated a little bit from player number two, um, but that's okay. These lifts are counterweighted to each other, so when one lift goes up on one side, it goes down on the other. So start making your way down the hill. Player two should also do the same. Uh, Brennan's already gone ahead in my case. Uh, and have player two wait by the lift on the left hand side, you can see Brennan just there. And continue along until you reach the second lift. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to get into this lift and you're going to hit the button on the side. This is the diamond lift which correlates to a lift on player two side. Once you go up you want to get out of the lift. So we're now back as player two and we want to take this lift up. As you can see it's counterweighted to the other one so hop on in and ride it up as far as you can and exit out at the top when you get there. Okay, so once player two has gone up, player one wants to make their way to the top of the stairs and at the top of the stairs you will find the dynamite lift. Player one needs to stand on top of this. And now for player two again, we want to make our way up the stairs and up the snowy slopes and make our way up another set of stairs to come across your next lift. Uh, and this one is the dynamite lift. You want to hop on in and you want to hit the go down option twice. Okay, so once player two has lifted player up one, player one up one floor, you want to take a left and you want to go up the stairs and just on your left hand side, you want to cross over the lift, you want to get out the other side and you want to take a left and go down the slope just here. At the bottom here, you're going to find the pickaxe lift and you want to go in and you want to hit the go up button once. Once you're up, you want to turn around and you're going to find an exit. Climb out of this exit and you want to go left down until you hit the dynamite lift. Stand on top of this one. Now that you've done that, player two will need to go up in the current lift he's in. Now player one will have gone down a floor because of player two's actions. You want to hop out of this lift and you want to take a right and you want to go into the minecart lift. And you want to push the go up button. I'm going to push that twice and turn around and you'll be able to exit out. You want to follow the snowy path to the right, get stuck on the ledges as you go. You want to cross over the lift in the middle and you want to make your way to the dinosaur skull lift on the end. And you want to enter this one and you want to hit the button to go down. Once you've done that, turn around and you want to make your way across to the other side and you're going to go into the pickaxe lift. Once you're in here, you want to press the go down option. 
and you want to exit out at the left and you want to follow the pathway back around up until you get to the dinosaur lift again. Now for player two, they're going to need to move out of the current lift that they're on and they want to go down the stairs that are directly in front of them. As you come down the stairs, you are going to find the minecart lift and you want to hop into this one and you want to go up four times. When you're clear from the top, you want to exit out and go to the right and you want to go across the other lift and up the stairs and you want to make your way down until you reach the dinosaur lift. As you come in close to this lift, you want to hop on in and you just need to go up once. Turn around from here and you want to make your way up the stairs and you want to take a right and at the top of the stairs you are going to find a lever. Hold fire for a second. Okay, and now back as player number one, you want to hit on the go up button. So keep clicking the go up option until you can go up as far as you can. Uh, and when you're in the right place, you want to turn around. You're going to see the pathway just across here. And on both sides, sides there are switches. You both need to hold the switches down on both sides. And if everything has gone to plan, this is going to put you at the end of chapter two. The gate on your right is all your left, depending on where you are. It's going to open up. You're going to get the achievement up, down, up, down. Uh, and this is to reach the excavation site. So once you've got your achievement, you want to head on into the cave in front of you. Okay, so we are now in chapter three, uh, and player one is gonna walk forward until you reach this blue gate, and on your left, you're gonna go into this corridor just here. Okay, and as player two, you need to follow player one down the tunnel, and you wanna take a right just here. Uh, and just on the other side of this gate is a red switch, which you're gonna wanna pull. Once you've done that, you wanna make your way back towards the blue gate in the center by the minecart. And for player one, you want to continue a little bit further in, so you want to use the turnstile that is just in front of you. So walk forward, press A to operate, and that's going to move you through to the other side. You want to take a right and go to the next turnstile, and you want to operate this one. As you come out the other side, you want to look to your left. I look to my right, because I'm like that. And inside this left tunnel, you're going to find a blue switch, and you want to pull that. So the gate will now drop in front of player number two once the switch has been hit. As you can see me spinning around in the background again there. Uh, and you want to walk forward as player two and you want to stand on the turnstile just here. And then as player one you want to return back to the turnstile and you want to operate it and that's going to adjust the position of player two and move you back into the tunnel. Once you're back in the tunnel you want to continue down forward over the stairs until you hit a blue gate. Okay, and now player two, once they're through on the other side, they're gonna to need to hit the blue switch that's in the left corridor. So turn to the left. You wanna hit that switch and we're gonna now swap back to player number one. So player number one is now gonna have access to the corridor and they're gonna be able to keep going further forward. So you'll see the gate just drop here. Walk forward to the turnstile in front of you and you wanna spin the lever to go around to the other side. Once you've done that, you want to turn to the right and you want to make your way over to the orange switch and give it a pull. Once you've done that, player one starts backtracking to the turnstile. They want to hit the switch and go inside again and you want to follow the wooden bridge across until you hit a blue gate. Okay, and as player two, you want to make sure you buy the blue switch and give it a hit again so that opens up the gate. But this time around, you want to backtrack as player two and you want to head over to the turnstile and you want to stand on this one just here. Now as player one, the gate will be open and you want to walk forward to the turnstile and you want to hit the switch and that will move player two to the other side and bring you back to the series of three gates. You want to make your way over to the blue switch. Don't hit it just yet. And as player two, you want to make your way around to the blue gates 
And then we want to have player one hit the switch and open that up. Okay, now you want to wait by the red switch as player two. And then player one needs to turn to the right and then take a left and head over to the turnstile and give it a quick use. Uh, and step off the turnstile once they're done. Okay, and now player two needs to hit the red switch on the wall that is in front of them. This is going to open up the final gate to get out of the area. Follow the corridor down to the right, and when you reach the end there's a turnstile. Have player two use this turnstile to pop out on the other side. And you meet back up with player one, and you want to run off into the distance. So head through the gate, and you want to follow the pathway down, and you'll eventually bag yourself the achievement for completing chapter three. Okay, so we are now coming into chapter number four, and the next area is going to get a little bit more interesting. So this is the point where you and the other player will get separated. Depending on who crosses the bridge will determine which person goes down which path. Uh, and each path has a different set of achievements. Some are the same, some aren't, uh, that you will unlock for going down that particular road. Um, there is a chapter select function, so once you get into chapter 5, you'll be able to flick back and uh, replay the chapters as the alternate path. Now for this puzzle, we have a bridge that likes to build itself. Um, we need to use a specific dial system in the room next to us, but you'll see in front of you a set of golden tiles that when a player stands on them, it will bring up another piece of a bridge. Uh, and player 2 needs to go into a tunnel just over to the right over here and use a piece of machinery. Okay, so the player that's going to stay behind, they want to turn around and they want to start making their way into the corridor. So we're going to use player two in this case, take a right and make your way up the hill. And as you come inside, you want to hit the lever on the left to activate the device. And then the device symbols correspond to the symbols that you see on the bridge. So when player one is stood on the star, you'll need to bring in the next symbol that they inform you of that is directly in front of them. If you put the wrong symbol in place, the bridge will fall and they will fall down to the bottom and that will reset the puzzle. Um, so player one needs to communicate with player two what tile goes in front of them. So in this case, the first two tiles are done for us. So player one can walk onto the bridge and stand on the golden sun tile. Once he stands on the golden sun tile, the next one will come up. Don't stand on it just yet, but tell player two what it is. Player 2 will then need to move the moon tile directly next to the sun tile to make sure that player 1 can walk onto it. Once it's there in position, player 1 walks forward again to get the next tile, which is Saturn in this case. So we flip back to player 2. Player 2 then needs to pull the Saturn icon from the bottom and up to lock that in. Now the next set of stairs are already in place automatically, so you'll be able to walk onto them. Uh, but player one will need to go up the right hand stairs and check the tile at the top and inform this back to player number two, in my case it's a comet. Head down the stairs, head up the left hand side and you want to stand on the galaxy, then this is a safe place where you cannot fall. So for this next part, the tiles are always in the same position for us, but it doesn't hurt for player one to call back to player two if this is the case, they may change the puzzle in the future. However, it's always the same for us, it's probably going to be the case for you. Um, we need to get the sun tile to the very top of the puzzle. So we're going to start off by just moving it to the right just to get it out of the way. And uh, we want to drag that out of the way. The next piece we want to move is we want to move the eclipse tiles. We want to move the moon tile and we want to pull that down one. We want to pull Saturn down one and then we want to take the comet from the very top, pull that down and move that to the left. Then we want to take the sun and we want to pull that all the way around until it reaches the top. Okay, so the next step that we need to do is we need to pull up the moon. Uh, now, accidentally we move it to the right here. We do apologize. It actually needs to go all the way to the top. However, pull the eclipse down into the middle. You want to move the moon to the left and again and then pull it all the way to the top. And then you want to pull the eclipse moons all the way up just to here and this is going to complete the bridge so for player one now they'll be able to go down the stairs and up the right hand side uh, and as they progress across the bridge each of the parts going to come in and they are going to lock in place so just keep edging your way forward wait for the clamps to go down to be certain that it's over uh, and eventually you will reach the other side now as you get off at the other side you'll see a bit of a castle kind of thing on your right Player one needs to head up into here and you want to go up the staircase 
and you want to hit the lever at the top this will put the bridge permanently in place for player two uh, and it will separate the two of you now as player two so you get an achievement at this point as well on both parts you'll get the same one uh, player two now can cross over the bridge without any issues and make their way through the door on the other side and for player one the exit is directly behind them uh, they literally just turn around and you open the door that is just behind you Okay, so we have now been separated from the other player. This is in the role of the player that was at the top of the stairs across the bridge first of all. Um, you're going to get different achievements compared to the other player, however this is the level you go back and chapter select and you can change positions. Now, this puzzle is a little bit tricky but requires some very good communication. So the first thing you're going to see as you enter this room is this alphameric new grid in front of you. To the left you will see a poster that contains numbers that reference this alphanumerics uh, and then behind you you've got another poster that also does the same thing and then around the base of the pedestal in the middle you're going to see a series of symbols those symbols will be fire leaf lightning and water and those arrows correspond to which one triumphs above the other Okay, so taking a look at player two's room, you'll see a bunch of books that have numbers on the back of them. This correlates to the posters in player one's room, which translates into the coordinates. You'll see a series of arrows that go between each book. This arrow is an indication to which book needs to triumph over the other one. Now, one of these numbers will always have a pin in the grid already, so you need to identify the pin that is missing. And player 2 also has a correlating grid in the room that they will use to create a link between the different pins player 1 puts in. So we're going to start this off by uh, player 2 doing a bit, uh, a bit of a scout of the room and selecting the first set of books. Uh, in this case we are going after books number 6 and 7. Okay, so books 6 and 7 correlate to B4 and E2 on the posters in the other room. Uh, and B4 is much more stronger than E2. So in here, I take a quick look at the posters. You look to the left just to check your numbers uh, and also to the one on the right. But what you need to do is you need to operate the panel and you need to find the hole that has not been populated. In our case, this is E2 and we just need to leave this as the lightning bolt because B4 is greater than E2. Now as player 2, they will need to draw a line between B4 and E2. So the leaf is going to triumph over the lightning. This is linked to the pedestal that we were looking at in player 1's room. Now to draw a line, you click on the A button from the, the pin that you want to draw from. Uh, and then you literally carve a path across the board and you press A on it to complete it. Okay, so we're going to look for our next books and we're going to go for book 10 and 8. Book 10 is greater than book 8. The 10 and 8 coordinate to B3 and E1 in the other room. So on the posters you want to look around just to make sure that you've got it right. Uh, and then you want to operate the panel that is in the middle. And you want to put your pin into B3. Now we're going to need to actually change the element of this pin and you can do this just by selecting A and it will locate around until you get the right one. You're looking for fire and then as player 2 you want to draw a line between these two pins. Okay and you know when you've been successful because the line is blue and not orange on the grid. So after our next set of books we are going for 9 and 4. 
it's easy to get mixed up with the the nine and the six in this case um, but it's normally pretty clear to figure out uh, so yeah nine is equal to a four four is equal to e5 and a4 is greater than e5 so check your posters make sure you've got the right numbers just in case they've changed since this puzzle it hasn't for us ever though uh, you want to click on the operate option and you want to go to the a4 point at the top and you want to enter that pin uh, a4 is greater than e5 so we don't need to change the pin in this case we then want to switch back to player 2 and draw a line between a4 and e5 okay and now for some more books so we're going to head out into the field again and we're going to go for books 2 and 3 3 is greater than 2 uh, and that translates into a3 and b1 once again check your posters just to make sure everything lines up so even though the text is on the screen uh, and you want to drop a pin into a3 at the top and we're going to want to flick this one around until it becomes water once you've done that you want to switch back to player 2 and player 2 needs to then draw the line between a3 and b1 And now we are on to our last set of books and we are going after books one and five. This translates into D2 and five is the equivalent of C3. C3 is more important than D2. So as player one, once again, check your posters just to make sure it's right. Uh, even though it's written on the screen, it may have changed, but it probably won't. I don't know yet. Uh, and you want to drop your pin into C3 and you want this one to be water. Uh, and once that's in, you want player two to draw a line between the two final pins to open the doors. You'll both bag yourself an achievement, the cathedral for player two and the tower for player one. Now we're going on to chapter number six. Okay, once chapter five is over you want to make your way out of the room you want to go to the right and up and then down the stairs keep following the walkway around ignoring the first door and you want to go down the stairs on the other side at the bottom of those stairs you want to take a left and go down again and take a right and follow it down into a pipe now shortly you're going to need to stop do not enter the room at the end of this corridor straight away because if you do you will trigger the puzzle and it is on a timer you will die if you go into this room and you don't have the support of the second player. Okay, and as player two, behind the uh, pedestal you are using earlier, you want to make your way down the stairs. Take a left and go down some more stairs, and at the bottom you're going to see a candle directly in front of you. You want to pick that candle up from that drawer, and then you want to crouch and go through the little hole. Click in on the sticks to crouch, and you want to follow the pipe around until you make it to the end. Halfway along you'll get the cutscene as well if player one triggered the other cutscene along the way. So now this room is a big part for solving the next puzzle. And then this works and it corresponds to the room above where player one is. Now on the wall you're going to see a series of fuses that are joined together by cables. So how it corresponds is each fuse is colour coded. Upstairs in the room above, some of those fuses are fixed into place. Um, and there's a variety of fuses that player one can pick up. Now, if you have the blue and the yellow fuse, fuse is one of the fixed fuses in the room. Uh, the lines on the wall correspond to fuses that will work with the blue and yellow fuse. You must complete the circuit in the room upstairs, allowing player one to get out of the trap. So let's just say in this case, if I have blue and yellow as a fuse that is fixed, I can plug in to the, uh, to the system that's next to it, the red and blue fuse, the orange and nothing fuse, or the red and green fuse. So to solve this to player one, we'll need to feed back to player two what fuses they have in the room and what fuses are fixed on the machines around the room. Uh, and then create the correlation between the wires to power up the door at the end and turn the trap off. Okay, so now we're back as player one. Uh, I'm going to show you the exact solution to this puzzle as opposed to um, trying to fully explain it. 
Um, it's linked to the wires on the top of the roof. That is the connection between the different devices that you need to follow. Um, as you can see, when, as soon as you light up in here, this electric ball starts to come down from the roof to zap the water you're in. Now start off by grabbing the red and green fuse. Go to the left and plug that in by the right of the entrance where you came in. Grab the blue fuse with nothing and place that in the pillar to the left of this one. And you want to follow the wire across as you can see. So the next fuse is already in place, which is orange and green. You want to grab the orange and nothing and place that into the right of that previous fuse. And then you want to pick up the next fuse, which is blue and blue. And you want to take that and you want to place that to the far right hand corner. Once you're done, you want to hit the switch. And if you've done this correctly, at the top of each beacon thingy, there will be an electric shock that jumps across from one to the other. And eventually you reach the other side, powering up the door, letting you through. So if everything's gone to plan at this point, you'll bag yourself the achievement Energize and player 2 is also going to bag themselves the achievement called Shock Therapy for supporting you through this puzzle. Okay, so now on to chapter seven, which is actually split up into three different puzzles. And these are some of the more challenging puzzles of the game so far. Uh, if you thought this one was tricky with the electric, get ready for the one that is soon to come. So as player one, walk forward and you grab the stone from the door and you want to be able to proceed forward, take a right, and you want to make your way up the stairs. Okay, and as you come into this room here, you want to make your way past the big thing in the middle. You want to head up the stairs and keep staying to the right. And as you come up to the top just here, you're going to go through this door and you're going to get a cutscene. Okay, and now as player two, you want to head into the pipe and you want to follow the pipe all the way through. And you want to make your way up to the door at the top. Um, it does require player one to pick up the stone from the other door for you to be able to move forwards. Uh, so there's a little bit of a delay here whilst the door opens on the video. Okay, and for the next set of puzzles, player two is going to spend most of their time in here. Um, but the next set of puzzles is going to require a pipe um, or set of pipes. There are three to four in total. You don't need them all necessarily. Uh, so you want to head down into the room and then on the left hand kind of top corner, you're going to find pipe number one. And just next to that, you'll find pipe number two. Crouch through the hole next to pipe number two and then tangled up in the vine, you're going to find pipes number three and pipe number four. You want to make your way down further into the tunnel and you want to come across these areas where you can store these pipes uh, and we're going to need to create a pipe network for some gas to join together to make different colored gases for storage so we're now back at player one he's got a pipe directly by the barrels in front of him on the bookcase at the back there are two more pieces of pipe and to the right of that on the floor you'll find the fourth piece of pipe now in this area, you're going to need to use those colored switches to create the colored gases and store them in the appropriate tank. You need to use the pipes to route the gas to the appropriate location uh, on both ends. So the pipes are linked upstairs and downstairs. You just need to combine the two together. Okay, so as player one, we want to start off by putting in the straight pipe into the first hole by the switches. We're going to make our way over to the second hole and we're going to put in one of the right angle pipes just in here and we're going to go over to the third hole and we're going to place in the t-junction we're going to use the button to rotate that 180 degrees once we've done that we want to head over to the uh, right of the bookshelf and we want to hit the switches on the wall to release the gas and now this gas is going to start flowing into player two's area as you can see the yellow one comes in and then the green one. Uh, you want to place the T-junction into the first pipe hole and you want to rotate that to the right once. You then want to make your way over to the second hole and you want to put in the right angle pipe and you want to rotate that to the right one more time. 
and then in the third hole you're going to want to place the straight pipe. Once you've done this we'll, we'll fill up the green barrel with the green gas. Okay as you can see now the right barrel is now full of the green stuff. Have both players sweep up the remaining pipes or take them back out sorry not remaining uh, and we're going to want to adjust some of the gases that are flowing through. So we want to switch off the yellow gas in this case uh, and we're going to go for the purple coloured gas this time around so we need to leave the red, uh, blue one on. So to get this one started in the first hole we are going to need to place the straight pipe for player one. We're then going to need to go down to the second hole and we're going to place in the right angle pipe and we're going to leave that as it is. We're going to make our way over to the third hole and place in the other right angle pipe and turn that to the right once. Okay and now back to player two and we're going to need player two to hit the red switch which is at the far side of the corridor on the left by the first hole. So give that one a quick flick and that's going to boot up the red gas that we require to make purple. Now we want to start off in the first hole by placing the T-junction and we want to rotate that to the left once. Make your way down to the second hole and you want to place in the right angle and leave it in its current position. Make your way down to the third hole and we want to place the straight pipe in on the end to create the purple gas completely and feed it back into the main room. Okay, so back is player one, and you can see now the purple gas is filled, but again, have both players collect up pipes from the holes. Uh, and we are going to go after the next collar, which is orange. So player one switches off the blue pipe and turns on the yellow gas. Um, this one doesn't require you to put all of the uh, uh, pipes into each hole, so you only need to do a few of them. So player one in the second hole is going to need to place the right angle and you're going to want to turn that one to the left once. You're going to make your way over to the third hole and you want to place in the straight pipe and rotate that once. And we want to move over to player number two now. So player two is now got all of the pipes ready to go. The first pipe they want is the right angle. Place that in uh, and leave exactly that exactly where it is. Player two then needs to make their way down to the third hole. So nothing goes into the second hole. And in the third hole you want to place the straight pipe. This completes the gas puzzle uh, and you unlock the achievement chromatic apparatus for filling the tanks. Okay, so now we are on to the worst puzzle in the game for me. Uh, we are currently by a very large plant and we want to take a left and go down the stairs. Uh, we want to climb into this well. Now, the majority of this puzzle is on player two. Player one is about to become stuck in this well that is filling with water and if you don't get out on time, you will drown. However, there is some key information inside the well to getting out of the well. Now, don't trip the puzzle just yet. The first thing you want to look at is this ladder uh, and each rung of the ladder or every other rung of the ladder has a corresponding symbol next to it. That symbol is related to the device that player two is about to use to save your life. Uh, once you trigger the puzzle, the ladder becomes scrambled and it rotates around the room and you need to rebuild the ladder so you can climb out. So player one then needs to look up at the ceiling. You will see a red arrow pointing up. This is in relation to a compass. This is north. Uh, and then you have the different symbols on northeast, east, southeast, southwest, west, and northwest. These symbols correspond to the ladder, uh, and then the points on the compass then correspond to the device that player two is going to use. I really hope this makes sense. <laughs> So the easiest way to do this puzzle is just to make sure that player one is consistently communicating back to 
player two which symbol is next on the ladder. Uh, you can stand on the valve to get a bit of extra height, the one that trips the puzzle, and as the pieces of the ladder come into place, start climbing up just to give yourself some extra time. Okay, so now we are as player two and we are at the start of the room we just kind of came in. So we've exited out of the little tunnel uh, and we're at the top of the stairs. At the left hand side of the room you're going to find this device which looks like a compass and you'll notice that there are ladder pieces. So there's a north arrow and some ladder pieces. So we have uh, the northeast, east, southwest, west and northwest uh, ladder markings on here. Uh, and this correlates to the compass that we were referring to in the other room. So player one needs to inform the end user of which one that they need to go after first. Uh, and I've marked it on the screen for you so you know which one to do. Now before we trigger the puzzle we can actually solve ladder number one beforehand to buy more time. Uh, and to do that you literally just need to readjust the cogs and move them around so that they will link up from this cog in the middle uh, to the cog that needs to be rotated. Once all of the pieces are in the right place, we want to switch back to player one. And as player one, you want to look down at the floor, you want to spin this valve and you'll notice that the room starts to rotate. Um, pretty sure you could probably climb this ladder back up if you wanted to. However, it's too much for you. Um, so if everything's been done correctly from player one in the beginning, the cogs will start to turn like so. Uh, and that's going to start rotating the original ladder piece back into position. Once it hits the right place, use a red cog to stop the progress. Uh, player one needs to tell player two when to stop when it hits the section before the ladder. So at this point now, I inform player two I'd like to stop and it puts the ladder piece into place. Now it is up to player two to solve the rest of these puzzles uh, to make sure that player one can get out. So player one keeps feeding onto the next one. However, I've covered the answer to the puzzle uh, on the board so you need to turn cog number one first, two which is in west, three in the northeast, uh, four is the southwest and five on the east. These are the ones you need to rotate to complete the puzzle. So use the mapping that I've put on the screen, make sure you rotate it and when player one says stop rotating block it with one of the red cogs or uh, disconnect one of the cogs that's making everything rotate.
And once you've been able to successfully link up all the cogs uh, and you've provided a, an effective escape route for player number one, uh, you will bag yourself the achievement uh, boyfriend for player one. Uh, and what are you waiting for for player number two? Okay, so once this deal is over, you want to make your way up the stairs uh, and to the right of the plant. Now, just to give you a bit of information on how the next puzzle works, there are a series of leaflets lying around which give you the ingredients to create specific components that will eventually generate a poison to kill the plant on the end. Um, you need to work with player two to pass them the right ingredients so that they can mix them together for you and generate that poison. There's also the same thing in player two's room. So in player two's room, there is a second bit of information which is correlating more to player one than player two. Uh, so you need to communicate this between each other. Uh, but the books are on the table in the dark in the corner by the hole from earlier. Uh, but this is mostly about mixing the different colored kind of colored waters that you get to create the right liquids to pour on the plants to make them grow more effectively. So player one grows the plant, passes it back to player two, player two mixes them together to generate the actual poison. So to do this, we're going to need to flip back to player one, first of all. Okay, and then from the big plant, we wanna make our way upstairs by the door we came in, and we wanna grab a bucket of each glowing paint thingy. So there are three colors up here. Now we wanna make our way downstairs and head to the right. On the floor in front of you, you're gonna find a trowel you wanna pick up. Next to that is a set of seeds you wanna grab from the trolley in the bucket. You then want to follow the wall around until you reach a cart and the next set of seeds are by that in a bucket also. Make your way over to the shelf and you want to grab the bottom left packet of seeds. The middle shelf has the next packet of seeds in the middle and then you want to grab the seeds from the end of that shelf. And then just to your right on the floor by the overturned cart is a, another packet of seeds. Start by planting the seeds that you've just picked up into the first planter. Go back to that packet of seeds and grab another set and you want to place it into the planter next to that. Uh, it's going to cause these automatically to grow as you do this. You want to make your way to the next planter and plant the tentacle blue plant. And then you want to plant uh, into the any of the any other planters the purple aubergine plant. Uh, and to make this one grow, water won't work on its own. You need to pour a bucket of purple stuff on it to make it grow. Once you've done that, we want to harvest these plants. So you want to start off by grabbing the two human head-like plants, first of all. Uh, and then you can grab the blue one as well along the way. Um, but you want to make your way over to a... Uh, grab the other one, the other aubergine as well, in the process. You then want to make your way around the corner and to the right of the plant, you're going to find this little cart. Uh, and in here, you're going to want to load in some of the um, materials that you've just collected. So place the two head-like plants into the trolley. And once you've done that, you want to place in the green bucket into the trolley also. 
uh, and to the left of that there is going to be a lever that you can hit to send these over to player two. Okay, now we're going to need player two to utilize the bearer barrels on his right hand side. This is next to the puzzle uh, that we've just solved for the water flooding um, by the cog machine that is just here. Uh, and up here you've got these cellar barrels. You just need to hit A on all three of them to obtain three cups of this yellow juice. That's required to make some of the concoction. Once you have that, you want to make your way down the stairs and then directly in front of you, you're going to find the uh, mine cart from earlier and you want to pick up all of the ingredients that you find here. And once you have all of those ingredients, we need to do a spot of mixing. Okay, and then in the corner of this room, you're going to find a mixing device. In here, you want to place one of the yellow cups and you want to place the green bucket. And then on the side of the device, there is a switch to create one of the first parts of the concoction. Uh, you're going to get yourself a glass of dark green beer uh, and then into this device we're then going to need to create a, another mix of the strange head-like plant uh, so we want to walk up to the platform and one of the yellow uh, mugs that we've already picked up from earlier so place those two in pull the lever and you're going to create a, another concoction uh, just to your left which is a brown mug this time We'll then need to take these two mugs that we've created and we want to drop them into the minecart. So the red one and the green one and the yellow one also. Uh, and then player two needs to hit the switch to sign the cart back to player one. Okay, so now back over to player one for some more green fingers. Um, he wants to sweep up all of the different types of drinks that have been placed in the carts. Uh, and we're going to do a spot more planting. So head back into the uh, greenhouse area. You want to clear out three plants with the trowel just to make a bit more room. Uh, and we're going to plant, first of all, the yellow long plant. And we're going to pour the green drink on top of it to make it grow. And you want to harvest that one. And then next we want to plant the red plant that we've currently got in our back pocket uh, and for this one we want to pour the red, red drink on it to make it grow and harvest that also. We now want to plant the blue angel like plant uh, and we want to pour a yellow glass on that one to make that grow and then harvest that also. Okay so now we're going to turn over these newly found ingredients to our friend player number two. So we're going to head over to the trolley uh, and we want to drop in the blue plant, if I can get it right, the red plant uh, and then the uh, purple thingy. We want to hit the switch and send that back over to them. Uh, and then for player two, the first thing we just need them to do is to sweep up all of the different new items that have kind of come in uh, and then send the trolley back straight away. So grab all three items. And then to the left, you want to hit the switch uh, and send the trolley back. And then once player one has the trolley back again, we just want to load in everything else that we have on us. So the remaining plants and the orange bucket. Uh, and then you want to click the switch to send that one over. Okay, so now that player two has received the next batch of goods, they want to grab everything out of the cart that lands directly in front of them. Okay, once it's here, you want to grab everything and we're going to start off by mixing some stuff together. Uh, and we're going to mix together the long yellow plant that has just been sent over by player one and the orange bucket. So place that in and pull the lever. And this is going to create a white serum, which is one of the base components for the poison. Now we want to drop into the vat. We want to drop in the yellow thing and then the red plant with three bags on it uh, and then this is going to create the red part of the potion. We then want to place in the two blue plants 
uh, and we want to pull the trigger to create the next part of that potion. And then we need to drop in the red plant, or the, sorry, the purple plant, in with the white serum and mix that together. Uh, and then this is going to give us the final item that we need for the poison, which is the green poison. And then we're going to need to blend these three together in the machine that is to the left. So place each file in, hit the rotate button, and then you want to place the next one in and keep doing so. Once you've done that, there is a switch on the right hand side of this machine to create that poison. Now that you have the poison, turn around and you want to make your way over to the table in the far left hand corner and you're going to find the poison sprayer. And then you want to make your way back to the carts from earlier and you want to place in the poison into there and then you want to send that back to player one. Once player one receives this, they need to grab the poison from the cart and they want to head upstairs to the plant. Once you are at the plant, you just need to hit your A button, the action button, and keep spraying the guy until he goes down. Uh, and eventually he'll keel over and die. You'll both get an achievement for doing this. You get the Growing Pains achievement for getting rid of the carnivorous weeds. Uh, and player two, I believe, also gets their separate achievement for this one also. Now player one will need to take the stone out of the middle of the, the plant to get the necessary ingredients ne needed for this. Uh, player two also gets an achievement at the same time for recipe for disasters for creating the pesticide that killed the plant. Okay, so we're still as player number two here and we're going to make our way out of the room. So head back to the corner, up the stairs, and then the door on the left is now open. And you want to take a right and you want to go up the stairwell that is just in front of you. And take another quick right and keep going up some more stairs. At the top, on the left hand side, you're going to walk into this room. Now this room is full of multiple different puzzles uh, and it is linked to a very similar room for player one. So player one and player two will need to talk to each other about the setup of this room to solve the puzzles uh, allowing you to go forward. Uh, there's about four or five different total puzzles in here where you must communicate backwards and forwards with each other. Okay, and for player one, to get to this room, you pretty much just want to turn around from where the dead plant is. You want to make your way back through the double doors. You want to continue across the corridor and then you want to take a left and you want to go up the stairwell just there. And then directly to the left of that again is another stairwell and you want to follow this all the way to the top. Okay and at the top of the stairs you want to take a left and you want to go down a small set of stairs and you're going to get a cutscene here, you can skip it if you need be. Uh, and you are going to be in a practically identical room to player number two. Uh, like I mentioned earlier the rooms are the same, near enough. Um, there are slight differences. Now, there are about five puzzles or so in here that we need to solve. So we're going to start off by using the candle puzzle and we need to collect a series of books that are hidden and locked in cupboards around the room uh, to create a doorway to the secret area. So move forward to the candlestick in the center of the room. Okay, so you'll need to explain to player two which candles are not switched on and which candles are switched off. Um, it's a very straightforward puzzle, just kind of look at it from left to right, number the candles in your head. Uh, but for me, candles 1 and 2 are on, 3 and 4 are off, 5 is on, 6 is off and 7 is on. So you need to relay that message back to player 2 in the other room and they need to turn their candles on and off to match player 1's room. Okay, so where's player number 2 now? And you take a look at the candlestick and you'll notice that it can be operated. Uh, so player 2 is going to need to switch off the uh, candles number three and six, and he's gonna need to turn on one, two, five, and seven. Once he's successfully done that, 
a drawer will pop open underneath both candlesticks and inside that drawer is a book. Both players will need to collect this book from that drawer. Okay, and for the next book, so we're back as player one, we're gonna need to collect some items that are kind of dotted around the room. These are all in random locations. However, it's always a globe, a small turntable, a small wooden box and an egg timer. And now this is completely random as well, so this is never in the same place. But as player two, you will need to find those objects around the room. Uh, so you need to look out for the turntable. In our case, it's at the bottom of the stairs. You'll then need to keep an eye out for the globe, the egg timer and the cube and player two will need to feed back the locations of those items to player one. Once player one has that information, they need to go around and place it into these blocks. Uh, I recommend doing it at the same time, but for this purpose you're seeing uh, kind of what was happening on both screens at once. Um, but yeah, this is completely random, but the player will be able to cycle through their items with left and right and place the items down based on what player two is describing. And once you've placed all the items into the right location, at the top of the stairs on the right, you'll find the book in a chest underneath what is like a flower drawing. Now, those flower drawings that I've just mentioned are part of the next puzzle. And yet again, another randomized puzzle. So these paintings are all in the same location as they are for player one and player two. Player one will need to rotate them both on the instructions to match the painting that is in player two's room. So player two feeds back how many rotations uh, or describes the picture to the other player. And player one must rotate that until it's in the correct place. The other option that you've got, if you feel sneaky, is to send a picture to each other. Uh, that's a little bit easier to help match that up. Now there are three of these paintings around the room. The next painting is halfway down the main stairwell. So walk about halfway down and you will find it just there. Again, player two needs to tell player one which pieces need to be rotated. It's random every time. And the third puzzle is downstairs in the far left corner of the room. Once you get the puzzle done and it's all correct, this is going to raise the painting in front of you in both rooms to reveal the book.
Okay, so the next puzzle involves a blinking crystal uh, in one room and crystals that need to be activated in player two's room. So player one needs to go stand next to this blue thing next to uh, the candle and you'll notice that this device will blink purple every now and then. Um, this actually correlates to the crystals that are in the room of player two. Uh, it's kind of like a game of hot and cold. When the purple icon is blinking at the top, player one needs to inform player two and then they need to activate the crystal that they're stood next to. Uh, when they're successful, this will push out the little pin. Uh, you'll need to do this five times in a row. If you fail, it will get reset. And so you can see what the crystals look like in player two's room. Um, going from that same orb, they're in random places again, but they look like this. Uh, and as you stand near them, they'll blink and player one says operate it. You click the button and it will light it up. Um, so as you, time you get close to one of these, you want to click on the operate button if it's blinking on the other end. Uh, we get quite lucky in this run and managed to actually hit it near enough perfect on the first try. So yeah, follow along, just make sure you wait until the uh, orb is blinking and then you want to activate the crystal as player two. And once you've done that, the actual book is underneath the orb. Uh, it's in both rooms in the same place again, at the bottom of the stairs. You want to give that a quick grab. And now we're going to move on to probably what is the hardest puzzle in the room. It's also randomized as well, so it's a bit of a pain to remember. Now, dotted around both rooms is a variety of paintings. Player two will be able to pick up the paintings. Player one won't be able to pick up the paintings. Um, so player two needs to go around and sweep up the paintings that are in the room now. They'll be dotted in random locations like above the fireplace, on the floor, uh, and it's the aim of player one to explicitly describe what painting is where in that room. So they'll need to feed back and give a description of whether it's a duck with two beaks and a snail shell uh, and where that is located in the room. Player two will need to match the exact positions of those paintings to complete the puzzle. So player one feeds back to player two exactly which paintings they need to place where. Uh, the painting that's covered in graffiti is always by the main door, uh, but all of the other paintings tend to be randomly located. Uh, but once you've provided the right information to that player, they will go match what is done in that room. Okay, and on to the next puzzle, which involves the cuckoo clock downstairs. The aim behind this puzzle is to match the sound of the cuckoo, the sound of the pendulum, and the speed of the pendulum as found in player two's room. However, we have noticed that this is the same answer every single time. So for player one, make your way to the side of the clock. There are some dials that you need to adjust. The top dial needs to be set uh, on rung number three. The second dial will need to be adjusted as well and you'll want to move that one just one and then the third dial you want to move back to the beginning and you want to push the button. That will get you the book out of the bottom of the clock. And for the finale of this puzzle we need to take a look at the graffiti painting in the room. Uh, the graffiti painting will have a series of letters on that are correlating to the book letters on the front uh, and they need to be placed on the bookshelf. So what is written on player one's picture is the answer to the puzzle in player two's room and vice versa in this case. So player one needs to inform player two of the letters and the sequence that they're in. 
uh, and player two will need to go in by the fireplace to place the books in line. So in this case, uh, it spells out Nepes. Uh, so he needs Brennan needs to order the books uh, and place them into the shelf as per player one's guidance. Okay, and then Brennan needs to feed back to me what is the graffiti on his painting. Uh, and it's Epsian, which I think is the same as his, but spelt backwards, I'm not sure. Uh, but he needs to feed back the letters to player number one so that they can put it into their bookshelf. Okay, and then player one needs to place their books on the shelf in the right order as explained by player two. Once this is successfully done, both players will bag themselves an achievement for uh, solving the alchemist's puzzle. And this is going to open up a doorway next to the fireplace in the middle of the bookshelf that is going to take you through to the next set of puzzles. If you are player one, you want to move forward and you want to place the crystals in the furnace ahead of you. Okay, and the next part is going to require you to do a little bit of science. Uh, supposedly. So player one needs to make their way up to the very top of the stairs and into the lab. Okay, so we are going to need to brew the last part of the soul stone. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a walk around of the lab, we have a device that is designed for splitting ingredients. We have a book on the table which has the two letter chemical names uh, in the games world for the different types of plants and chemicals we're working with. We have the chemical rack in front of us which has some different icons to depict what they are and to the right of that you have the ingredients for making the soul stone and to the right of that document you then have the blending device for mixing together uh, the different chemicals. Okay so now we are as player number two who is gone through the bookcase. Uh, you just want to follow the corridor around and you're going to reach this kind of under room. In here, there is a dude singing trying to distract you. He is not a good vocalist. Uh, just ignore him. Make your way across the other side of the room and you're going to find some information that's dotted around. So this relates to the different pictures on the vials. It gives you the names of the contents of the vial which relates to the chemical book upstairs. Uh, and their abbreviations. So in this case, you can see like the para oxidate uh, would relate to something like PX. Next to that, you have even more descriptions of the different uh, vials uh, and the names of those items contained in those vials. And then behind you, there is one more book with more information on the contents of the vials and their names. Now the aim behind this is that player one needs to describe what is the picture on the vial. Player two needs to feedback what is the name of the contents of the vial. Uh, there's a third piece of paper with it on as well. Um, and then they need to translate that into its chemical code. Uh, player one needs to tell player two what is that chemical code because that tells you what you need to mix together to make the soul stone. So we need to combine all of these chemicals together uh, or break them down so that we get the right chemicals OH, OL and PF to mix them together to make the soul stone. Now, this can be very tricky uh, in terms of communication. It's not too hard, but with some trial and error, you'll figure it out. One of the chemicals is blurred out. However, when you play it back to each other, it's fairly straightforward to get a grip on. Now this is the same answer every time, um, however we're showing you this just in case it does change in the future if somebody makes an update, uh, this is the way you solve that puzzle. Okay so now it's over to player one to do the experiments. We first want to start off by reaching to the rack and we want to grab the red vial with the red mushroom off the front. We then want to make our way around by rotating the bottom of the vial tray to get the potion with the crab on the front of it. It's also a yellow potion. Make your way across to the mixing device, drop both vials in and click the button. Uh, and that's going to produce a bottle of 
orange stuff with an angry carrot on the front of it. Now once you've done that we want to make our way back to the, uh, the rack of vials. Keep turning it to the left. It's worth noting your vials fill up again when you turn it all the way around. Grab the vial with the yellow plant and the yellow juice inside. And then make your way back to the blender and place the two vials in to create your next concoction. This will give you OH, which you want to take to your right and you want to place it into the vial blender. We don't need this one anymore. Uh, we've got our first top level element that we need to mix together. Now head back to the vials and you want to grab the blue bottle with the blue dandelion on the front of it. You want to go around to the splitter and you want to place that vial into the splitter and push the button to separate it into two more different vials. You're going to get a green one and a blue one. You then want to place the green vial you've just picked up back into the splitter to break it down even further. And then you'll want to pick up the PL potion and the new orange potion you've just received. Now from here we want to make our way back to the vial rack and we want to rotate it around completely to give it a bit of a refill. And then we want to grab another blue dandelion off of the vial rack. Make your way around and you want to place the blue dandelion vial in with the potion PL. Click the button to mix the two together. This is going to give you another blue vial with a blue blob on the front of it. I believe this is OX. You want to place this one into the vial blender. And once you've done that, you want to make your way back around to the rack. And you want to rotate the vials around. And you want to pick up the blue dandelion one more time. Make your way around to the splitter and break that one up again. Collect the new vials that you've just received and then we want to put the dandelions, the yellow green bottle back into the splitter uh, to give ourselves a, another batch of PL and another orange angry carrot looking thing. Once you've done that make your way back to the vial rack and you want to spin that around and you want to grab the purple bottle with the purple plants on the front of it. You want to grab the green stacked mushroom. You want to go around to the blender and you want to place the mushroom bottle in and the blue plant in and you want to hit the blend button. You then want to take the new vial and you want to place it back into the blender. You want to drop that one down and you want to mix that with one of the yellow vials with a small carrot on the front. This is going to give you a yellow vial with a blue carrot on the front of it. You'll then want to mix together a small carrot with a yellow vial uh, in with the PL concoction. Click the button to mix the two together and you're going to get the dandelions back from earlier, which is the green contents. You then place the dandelions into the blender and then you want to place the yellow vial with the blue carrot on front uh, and you want to mix those two together. And then that is going to give you the final uh, ingredient for making the soul stone. Place that vial in, it will close the door and it will automatically spit out the soul stone piece for you. Now if you've been following along, you'll get two different achievements at this stage. Player 1 will get the equivalent ex exchange uh, and player 2 is going to get the mixed feelings achievement. Now as player one, you want to head downstairs again. Um, I decided to do a lap of the room, I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but you want to head downstairs to where you put the crystals away originally and you want to plug in the final crystal to trigger a cutscene uh, and also move into chapter number 10.
Okay, so you'll be as player two to begin with. Player one's been captured. Take a left straight away and follow the corridor to the end. Take a left and you want to go up the stairs. And when you reach the top of the stairs, take another left and you want to follow the corridor all the way down to the end until you find a switch. This is going to set player one free. Okay, so now we need to line up the statues that are in player one's room to match with player two's room. Uh, we need them all facing in the same direction. Player two's statues do not rotate, player one's do. Uh, player two has the ability to control the direction of which the statues turn when player one presses the button. So it takes a few minutes to figure this one out. Um, it's correlated by things like the light and you need to actually explain to uh, open the curtains so player two which knows which one to use. So once you're out of the cage, player one is going to need to find the blue flag and move it out of the way to open up the curtain. This will shine a light on the flag in the back of the room which corresponds to which statue will move. So when you are back in control of player two, they need to find the lit up knight armor. And if it's a red and white flag behind the knight, you want to pull the lever in front of it once. And then player one needs to make their way over to the pedestal where there is a button that they need to push to complete the first rotation. It's directly in front of the king. So make your way over, push this button just once and only once. And then player, two, uh, player one will need to open the next curtain, which is the green curtain. So you want to pull that one back. And then as player two, you want to make your way around to the other side and find the knight statue that has light shining on it. Okay, and as you come up on the statue, it should have a yellow flag in the background. Player two will need to hit the switch once. Uh, and then as player one, you'll need to make your way back to the button and press that one more time. Okay, and then player two will need to throw the lever again in front of the statue with the yellow flags behind it uh, to reverse the direction it will turn in. So pull that one more time. And then player one will need to hit the button one more time. And this is gonna solve the first half of chapter 10. Okay, so we are now in the final part of chapter 10. This part of the puzzle requires player one to read back a set of poems to player two so they can figure out what shields go on the back of which knight statue. Uh, and player two needs to read a set of poems back to player one so they can figure out which weapon needs to go into which hand of the statue. However, this is the same as every other time we've ever done it. So we're gonna give you the right order for each one. So player one needs to sweep up all of the weapons from the statues and the order going from left to right, the axe goes in the first statue, hammer in the second, sword in the third and mace goes into the fourth. So collect them all up. Okay, and back as player number two, we want to make our way back into the corridor. As again, you can see the crazy battle going down outside. You want to make your way down to the end and a new door is going to have opened up in front of you. You want to take a left as you go in and on the back of these uh, statues, you'll find the shields. In the middle, there is a set of posters which explain to player one how to solve the puzzle in the front around where the position of the items go. So player two needs to sweep up the, uh, the shields off of the back of the statues.
And once you have all of those shields, you want to put it the order in as Dragon, Deer, Phoenix, Bear. From left to right again, so it's Dragon, Deer, Phoenix, Bear. And if everything has gone to plan, the doorway is going to open up and player two is going to be reunited with player one. They're going to hug it out, but now you are going to be presented with a very tricky decision. Uh, the player must kill or sacrifice themselves. And there are two achievements that are kind of orientated to this. So you get one for sacrificing yourself or killing the other player. Brennan chose to kill me in this case. I think it's because I have a higher gamer score than him. Uh, so the player that does the sacrifice will get an achievement. The other player that was sacrificed will get an achievement or two for being sacrificed. Uh, and you'll need to play this chapter over a few times. So one player must do the sacrificing of themselves or the other player. Uh, and then you need to reverse the roles. Um, so there's kind of a few achievements linked to that. So you'll need to play that final chapter four times over. However, if this is your first playthrough, I recommend that you skip back to chapter five at this point and you go back and you play through the game one more time. So you pick up the achievements for being the other player. So that's chapter five. The timestamps will be down below in the comments section and the description of the video. Jump back to this point uh, and then you want to mix up the, the roles and responsibilities. Uh, player one becomes player two from chapter five onwards to get the other achievements that are linked to being the other player. Okay, and I'm going to just show you the last few times of where uh, player one, myself, I'm actually doing the sacrificing and the killing to get the other two achievements. Um, I've been Justin from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful, drop us a like, comment, and subscribe, and happy hunting.